Well, welcome again this morning as we explore the book of Joshua. Yesterday we were looking at God's victorious hand, and today we continue in uh, exploring the book of Joshua as we look at Joshua chapter 7. Now, from verse 1, I'm reading from the New International Version. It says that, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took some of them, so the Lord's anger burnt against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Aven to the east of Bethel, and told them, go up and spy out the region, and the men went up and spied out Ai. And they returned to Joshua, and they said, Not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not, and do not worry. They, do not wear the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three thousand went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to deliver us and to the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If we only had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan, pardon your servant, Lord, what can I say? Now the Israelites has been routed by its enemies. The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? Now, friends, Israel has actually been involved in a great military conquest. Yesterday, we saw how they conquered Jericho. The, 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 the victory in Jericho was amazing. So they march around the city and they conquer Jericho. And as they bask in the glow of victory, they get another appetite to go and fight the city of Ai. Now, verse 1 in this portion of scripture actually reveals a very, a, a very, a, 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 a very significant uh, thought. It says that when the Israelites then, but, then, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to devoted things. You remember yesterday, Joshua commanded them not to touch any devoted things to idols. But in chapter 7, Achan, the son of Kami, went and took some devoted things to himself. So verse 1 reveals the truth that God was upset with Israel. That Israel thought everything was right because they were basking in the, in the previous defeat of Jericho. And they were thinking that Ai was going to be defeated in the same way because God was with them. But the scenario actually changed because these guys, despite, that they, I mean, despite the fact that they had had victory before, the Bible declares that when Achan took the accursed thing, the scripture declares that they were defeated in war. Now, my desire for preaching this message is that we could examine our hearts and our lives, and if there is anything in any of us that we think we have hidden away, anything that we think we have covered, I want us to take this issue and, set it, um, and settle it before the Lord. Achan took away forbidden things. How many times do we take forbidden roots against God and still expect victory. Maybe the kind of challenges you're facing today could be as a result of a forbidden route you had taken and you've refused to repent. The fact is, brothers and sisters, that there are some things that we can't just hide. You know, Achan thought that he would hide these things, but he couldn't hide them anymore. God gave Israelites a defeat. If you eat a raw onion, 
For example, <laughs> you cannot hide. Everybody will know about it, that that guy is smelling onions. You cannot hide about that, you know? If you stop using, if, 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 if you stop bathing or, or stop using a perfume, people will know. You cannot hide that. If you stop bathing for like three, four days, people will know this guy has not been showering. You'll be smelling. Why? You cannot hide it. It's a product of your action, you know? And in the same way, sin cannot be hidden. The more you continue sinning against God, the more you expose yourself to shame and embarrassment. And that is what Achan did, you know? And friends, it's true that even though sometimes we may not want to admit these things, this is a reality. That sin brings a reproach to any people. While righteousness exalts a nation, sin actually comes with reproach. And that's what Achan did. He took a forbidden root. He took a forbidden, I mean forbidden stuff that God had warned them not to take. And sin reigned in the camp. Now, the beauty about God is that even as Israel went up to Ai and suffered a terrible defeat, imagine this, 36 people killed. These are the same people who went to Jericho and they conquered Jericho sweatless. They came back to Ai that had lesser number than Jericho and these people beat them in war, flat foot. You know? Sin was in the camp, and there was no way they were going to win uh, this battle with sin. Now, there are some certain things I noted about this, these portions of Scripture that I want to share about very quickly. Where were some of the gaps that Israelites may have missed out on God? Now, one, nowhere in this passage that do we get a hint that Joshua was told by God, you know, that, or that Israel sought God on how to actually, at, or, or when, to attack Ai. God actually wanted them to win the battle, but they did not seek God as to when to attack Ai. So they didn't seek the will of God. And friends, it is always no, it is always important to know that it is dangerous to rush things without seeking the will of God. Secondly, we are not told that they carried the Ark of the Covenant to battle as they went. They did, not they did not acknowledge the presence of God as they went to Ai. So that means they ignored God completely. Friends, these are some of the gaps that actually the Israelites faced when they, uh, faced when they were going against Ai. Sin came into the camp. Allow me to outline a few things about sin because sin is very, very dangerous. Now, the truth is, brothers and sisters, that God knows about our sins. What we learn about this in through these portions of Scripture is that God knows about our sins. If you read Hebrews 4.13, he knows that we, can, we cannot hide from him. He's everywhere present. He knows about your sins. And he, knows, he not only knows about your sins, he also hates sin. Proverbs 6, verse 16 to 19 says... There are six sins that God hates, seven which are an abomination to him. And he outlines, and, 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 and the, the scripture outlines these sins that God hates. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and many other sins that you commit. So God hates sins. He knows the sin that you committed yesterday, today. He knows. He hates that sin. Number three, the beauty about God is that even though he hates sin and he knows the sins that we commit, he has a plan for it. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, he says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In fact, he, he, he begins by saying that if we say that we have no sin, we lie and we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's what he says. So God has a remedy for the sins that we commit. Otherwise, if we do not take up the root of that remedy, he punishes the sin. Galatians 6, verse 7 to 8 is very clear. God will punish every sinner. He'll punish. But if you take time and confess, he will forgive you. As I wrap up my sermon today, 
I want to ask you today. Achan committed a sin, but he did not repent. That led to defeat in the land of Israel. Is there a sin you've committed that you've refused to repent? You know about it, your friends don't know, but you know. The secret things you do in private, you know. Maybe that's the reason why doors are blocked for you. Maybe that's the reason why you're not getting breakthroughs wherever you are. That sin that has gone unconfessed. My prayer for you to this morning, my viewers, is that you may confess that sin before God. My prayer is that you may identify it, and unlike Achan, just go before God and tell God, God to forgive you. It all begins by asking for forgiveness. Let us pray. Father, we are praying to you today that you help us to identify the secret sins that we do that we may obtain forgiveness from you. Forgive us for the times that God, our sins have gone unconfessed. I pray for myself as well as with the viewer today that we shall be able to identify these weak areas in our lives that have not glorified you and confess that sin to obtain mercy. So God, I pray that let this word be a blessing to all my viewers. And even as we reflect through the book of Joshua, your blessing shall rest upon us. This we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We will see you tomorrow even as we explore the book of Joshua. But I want to give you a challenge that after this broadcast, go to your bedroom. Go to your prayer closet. Shut that prayer closet. Meditate on your life. Reflect on your life. And let it be that whatever you come out of, with the things, the sins that God exposes, repent them and you'll experience the mercy of God. See you tomorrow again. God bless you.